Who the medical director tells Aid on Your Side the number of daily patients walking into these urgent care clinics is double what it usually is this time of year. No major traffic tie ups tonight as the protesters obtained a permit for this area. The rain tonight is only making the job of the search and rescue crews more difficult. And we are live here a block away from the collapsed condo tower. Again, these are some of the faces of the nearly 160 people who are still missing tonight. If I have this mask on tonight because of the heavy smoke that is blowing inland from the collapsed condo building. Tonight from this vantage point it is much more difficult to see the heavy equipment on scene. Uh, right now, just a light drizzle coming down here in Crystal River. The wind picking up just a bit, but still a long night ahead here in Citrus County. Over to my right, some of the worst damage you can see. That out of control Jeep plowed right through this shed. Walk with me this way. Amazingly, the Jeep missed hitting any of these trees. Carlos Medina's mom tells me she visits here every Sunday. Today, she was with the rest of her son's classmates as the Hillsborough School District made sure he'll forever be part of the class of 2021. And the honking has been nonstop as cars drive by. These Joe Biden and Kamala Harris supporters waving their signs and flags. President Trump is spending his final few hours as the president of the United States by flying here to his adopted home state of Florida. Let's give you a live look right now at Joint Base Andrews outside of our nation's capital. Tonight, America is ahead of schedule, reaching President Biden's goal of 100 million shots in arms on his 58th day in office. So what's President Biden's next vaccine goal? Well, stay tuned. I want to thank you, Justin, in particular for following us through the whole thing because we really felt you had our backs. We spoke last time you were still on that cruise ship in Japan. Luckily, my, uh, my boat parade shirt still not covered in beer. Jen. There you go. And because he's the Bucks inaugural fan of the year, he also gets his own cardboard cutout inside the stadium. He told me he plans to take that home after a Bucks win. We're live tonight outside Raymond James Stadium. I'm Justin Shecker, eight on your side. News Nation reporter Justin Shecker is live in Tampa with how theme parks and stores are adjusting. Justin, good evening. Aaron and Rudabay, good evening to you both. Florida never had a statewide mask mandate during the COVID-19 pandemic. Local mask rules in Tampa Bay area counties ended earlier this month after an executive order from Governor Ron DeSantis. Well, this weekend, grocery stores and theme parks are making changes based on that new CDC guidance. Honestly, I'm, I think I'm ready to shop without a mask on. Um, I just hope that everyone is truly vaccinated who doesn't wear one. An about face from the CDC this week is leading stores like Publix, Walmart and Trader Joe's to allow fully vaccinated customers to shop without a mask on. Probably safer to wear masks in general, um, but then again, we can't continue to do that for the rest of our lives, so it's got to start somewhere. Here in Florida, a new law takes effect on July 1st that prohibits businesses from asking for proof of vaccination. The grocery stores, according to their new policies, are still asking unvaccinated shoppers to mask up. It, it is an honor system policy. We're, we're not going to get herd immunity anytime soon. We may never get it, especially if there's a variance. And in these large open stores where the air systems are pretty well managed now, it's safe if you've been vaccinated. At Walt Disney World, it's now optional for visitors to wear a mask outdoors, but they're still mandatory on transportation and at all indoor attractions. The fully vaccinated can also ditch their face coverings at Busch Gardens, Tampa Bay. Businesses still reserve the right to require mask wearing, so restaurant owners like Joni Cornell at Bella's Italian Cafe in South Tampa need to decide what to do now. It's a tough call because there are there's still going to be people that will not come in if the staff and other customers don't have masks on. And regardless if you've been vaccinated, the CDC says a mask is still needed on trains, planes and buses and in hospital settings. Right now, according to the CDC, nearly 37 percent of the U.S. population is vaccinated. The Biden administration says it's still a critical goal for 70 percent of adults to get at least one shot by July 4th. The rubble from the catastrophic condo building collapse in South Florida reminded this first responder of 9-11. 76, I see many people on the balcony. There's, the building is gone. There's no elevators. There's, this is nothing. I mean, it, it almost resembles the trade center. Soraya Cohen tells Eight on Your Side, her husband Brad Cohen and his brother visiting from Alabama were asleep in an 11th floor condo when part of the building suddenly crumbled to the ground. 
When Brad went to sleep last night, did he think the roof was going to collapse on him? Anything's possible. Brad Cohen and several other community members from the Shoal of Bell Harbor live in the Champlain Towers, according to the synagogue's president, Joe Givner. I mean, we pray together uh, and uh, just a, a terrific, you know, just the, the sort of person you want to have around in your community. This synagogue about a mile from the scene of the destruction has become a collection point for donations from across the area. You want more people inside the truck or outside? By early evening, at least five trucks had dropped off items for the many families in need. I've just, I just went inside. We have an army of volunteers who are bringing supplies, water, furniture, clothing, you name it. One of the many volunteers says she's seen buildings in her home of Mexico City ruined from earthquakes. But watching something like this, happening during the night with no no warning it is it is it's really a shock throughout the day and into the evening community members came here to pray for the victims and their families as they try to make sense of this unimaginable tragedy god is in control of the world we're humans we just have to do what we can do to help one another i think today is going to be a little bigger and better than Sunday and yesterday. For the third day in a row, Madi Godoy joined the demonstrators at Al Lopez Park in Tampa. Libertad, 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 libertad. With their chant signs and flags, they're showing support for the Cuban people rising up against the communist regime. It's not just for my family, it's because all the people that are suffering, like when I'm telling you suffering, believe me. Despite a Tampa police presence, a group still rushed into the road to block traffic on North Himes Avenue. Nearly 11 miles away in South Tampa, a smaller group gathered outside the gates of McDill Air Force Base. This sign calls for a U.S. military intervention. There is no communication, there is no internet, there is no electric, I mean, there is nothing. After 7 p.m., Please leave the roadway immediately. Tampa police turned away protesters trying to move onto I-275 at Dale Mabry Highway. Officers tried to get this large group to disperse. The blocking of roadways by assemblies is illegal for Florida state statute and city of Tampa municipal ordinance. But the several hundred protesters began marching, followed by a line of police officers. But again, it appears the police have successfully pushed the protesters north away from the I-275 on and off ramps. These mass protests in Tampa come during an unprecedented moment in Cuba's history, as many Cuban Americans hope change is coming to the island nation. Do you see an opening? Do you think this moment can be different? <sighs> That's what I want to happen. I hope so. The thing is that this is the really first time that people in Cuba, they go to the street, they are claiming for their freedom. Everybody was like, wait a minute, Trump didn't, Trump didn't get it first, you got it first. I was like, yeah, I got receipts. The Regeneron antibody cocktail certainly got a lot of attention after former President Trump tested positive for coronavirus. But nearly three months earlier, Tampa radio personality Christopher Denson says he survived COVID-19 because of the same treatment. Did you have any idea what a monoclonal antibody was when they asked you to sign up for the trial? No, I didn't. Hospitalized last July, Denson became the first COVID patient at Tampa General Hospital to receive the lab-made proteins that fight off the virus. I couldn't breathe for three days, and the last day they came in, and it was it was a miracle, you know. Like 30 minutes, I was, I was, I was good. Not only did he get better, but his, you know, bravery, helped a lot of other people because now we, we this treatment is proven. Dr. Kami Kim is an attending physician at TGH and the director of the Infectious Disease Division at the University of South Florida. Somebody who hasn't had the vaccine, these are monoclonal antibodies are giving you these neutralizing antibodies that will prevent you from getting really sick from COVID. Dr. Kim tells it on your side, more than 900 COVID patients at TGH have received monoclonal antibodies at an infusion clinic at the Global Emerging Disease Institute. And our own data suggests that if you get it within three days of symptoms, you do even better than if you got it within six days. Is it fair to call this a life-saving medication? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't usually say things like that, but yes, for sure. Nearly a year after his COVID scare. I'm, I'm 110 percent. Denson says he's forever grateful for the care he received at Tampa General. Right now, um, looking back on that, it's a, it's a blessing.